One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, for net. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. Oh boy, I can just, I can see the comment section now, mostly on Facebook, not necessarily here on YouTube, but once I share this on Facebook, I can see the comments already. You're a Blake Bortles dick rider. Blake Bortles is playing for the Rams. He doesn't play for the Jags anymore. Why are you talking about him? For the simple fact, and I've touched on this quite a bit, Blake Bortles has left a lasting image for Jacksonville Jaguar fans. Whether that be because of his personality or even his play overall on the field, and it didn't get any better than 2017, especially late in the season. From about the Cincinnati game all the way until the AFC Championship game, Blake Bortles was playing like an elite quarterback now 2018 with the bad season he had all that kind of got swept under the rug and everybody was calling for this man's head rightfully so he did crap the bed really really bad in 2018 but that doesn't mean we can't reminisce and look back at the quarterback that Blake Bortles was and appreciate some of his greatest moments because he's not going to be with the Jacksonville Jaguars anymore and I was going to make this video sooner but now seems like the best time to do it. And I already know, get your typing fingers ready because I know you guys are going to get mad about this video. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the top 10 best Blake Bortles performances of all time. Number 10 versus the Colts, 2017, 330 yards, 69 completion percentage, one touchdown, no picks. You know it's a great Blake Bortles game when Bortles does not throw an interception. That's basically a rarity. He averages at least three interceptions a game. Fact check. I looked three picks a game. Don't even argue with me in the comment section down below because it's facts. Don't even look it up. Don't even look it up. It's true. He averages three interceptions a game. So the ga- so the days that he did not throw any interceptions were huge. The Jaguars sweep the Colts in 2017, and Blake Bortles was known for beating the Colts as one division rival that Bortles never really struggled against. He always struggled against Tennessee and Houston, but Indianapolis was never one of those uh, teams that Blake really ever struggled against. In fact, one time he was the quarterback, and they won 51-17. Blake Bortles has never struggled against the Colts, and he showed it in this game in 2017 where he tossed 330 yards, 69 completion, one touchdown, no picks. But the defense definitely helped out a little bit, racking up 10 sacks, which was the second 10-sack performance of the season for this 2017 Jaguar defense. And Blake Bortles was part of the reason why this team won. He was slinging it down the field, completed almost 70% of his passes, and he threw a touchdown. And that's all Blake Bortles was ever asked to do was manage the game, Throw a lot of yards, and he did that in 2017 against the Colts. Number 9, Blake Bortles versus the Giants, 2014, 194 yards, one touchdown, no picks. Now, a 194-yard passing game with one touchdown, no interception, just sounds like a typical Blake Bortles performance. So you're probably thinking to yourself, Treep, why is this game on the list? This is a totally average, typical Blake Bortles game. Well, for the simple fact that this was Blake Bortles' first ever come from behind victory and it was against the New York Giants. I remember watching this game and I actually posted about some, posted about it on Facebook and I was like, I'm done with the Jags. How are we losing 21 to 0 right now at halftime? How bad can we possibly be? Blake Bortles isn't the answer. All this and all that. But what happens? The defense steps up and the Jaguars do some things on offense to come all the way back to tie it up at 21 apiece until a game-winning field goal helped the Jaguars beat the New York Giants in 2014. And again, this was Blake Bortles' first come-from-behind victory and it implanted his legacy here in Jacksonville. Number 8, 2018 versus the Jets, 76 completion percentage. 388 yards. This was Blake Bortles' best ever statistical game as far as yards goes. It was a career high in yards against the Jets where he threw 388 of them bitches. 
And he ended up beating the Jets in 2018. And this is when the Jags were on top of the world in 2018. Nothing could go wrong. Blake Bortles is the savior. Don't even worry about it. This was the part of the season where Blake Bortles sympathizers were all like, Bortles is okay, man. Look at what he just did. 76% of his passes completed for 388 yards. That is a good, good game. And it was. And Blake Bortles showed his promise as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Unfortunately, his inconsistency problems is the reason he probably will never find a starting job ever again because after that, the Jaguars as a whole team and Blake Bortles as well went downhill. And this was the game prior against New England where he beat his uh, old standing passing yards uh, in week two and then he beat it again in week number three against the Jets where the Jags came together with a victory started the season off at two and one and somehow ended the season at five and eleven but in this game Bortles was hot this whole offense was hot this whole team was hot uh in this game and the Jags were able to beat the Jets something that uh Blake has struggled with over his career I believe he's only one and two against the Jets uh, all time so you know being able to beat the Jets for the first time and having a career day was a big deal for Mr. Blake Bortles Number 7 versus the Titans, 2016, 327 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions, and a receiving touchdown. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the last time that the Jaguars beat the Tennessee Titans was in 2016, and it was when Blake Bortles caught his first ever NFL touchdown pass. And he has cemented the reason why the Jaguars should have kept him on the roster and converted him to tight end. Could you imagine... Could you imagine how happy, <laughs> like, I don't know about y'all, but I would have been so happy. They're like, we're going to keep Blake Bortles, right? We're going to re- restructure his contract to a tight end deal, and we're going to let him battle it out in the offseason, see if he makes the, the roster as a tight end. That would have been hilarious. He caught a ball from Marquise Lee, who threw it to him, and I believe it was a 20-yard dime. It was a deep ball uh, that Bortles ended up catching, and that was the last time, again, the Jaguars beat the Tennessee Titans in 2016, and it was one of his best career days, throwing 327 yards. Uh, Not necessarily in throwing touchdowns, because he only threw one, but he caught uh, one as well. So Blake Bortles cemented his legacy against the Titans in this game, and then after that, he just kept shit in the bed, and Marcus Mariota kept on beating him. Now with Nick Foles in at the helm of the Jaguars, finally be able to beat the Tennessee Titans? I sure hope so. Number six versus the Seattle Seahawks in 2017, 258 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Now, as a as far as perfect passes and pretty throws go, this might have been Blake Bortles' best game. His touchdown pass to Keelan Cole down the sidelines, I believe it was about 30, 40 yard pass, it was an absolute dot. And you just ask yourself, Blake, why can you not do this all the freaking time? Uh, and, you know, that was kind of his problem. You know, Blake was kind of scarred from the beginning, having to go through three different offensive coordinators, and that might have, you know, hurt his performance. But I'm not here to sympathize with Blake Bortles. I'm here to remember the good times with Mr. Bortles. And against the Seahawks, that was a big, big win for the Jags in 2017. Probably the biggest regular season win in franchise, oh, maybe not in franchise history, but definitely in the last 10 years, that was the biggest uh, regular season victory the Jaguars were ever were able to snatch up, and that was prime Jacksonville days. The fans in attendance got Seattle all wild up to the point where a defensive lineman tried climbing into the stands and fighting with an actual fan. It was hilarious. It was awesome. It was dope. It was crazy to see, and the atmosphere in there was just crazy. I could not even imagine being there. I probably would have ended up throwing hands with that Seattle defensive lineman, and I would have ended up getting my ass kicked basically because of my fandom, but... Blake Bortles did go off in this game, and like I said, that touchdown pass to Keelan Cole was something special. He also hit D.D. Westbrook up deep as well. Uh, Blake Bortles had a really good game against Seattle and a really good uh, late-season stretch in 2017, and Seattle was part of that and part of his significant wins. Number 5 versus the Pittsburgh Steelers in the playoffs in 2017. 214 yards, one touchdown, no interception. If you want a blueprint of what Blake Bortles was supposed to be in Jacksonville, this Pittsburgh game in the playoffs is the exact blueprint 
of what Blake Bortles should be. A game manager relying on Leonard Fournette. And that's what he was, and he did exactly what he needed to do. 214 yards, one touchdown, no picks. He hit Keelan Cole up for a deep ball and threw his touchdown pass to Tommy Bohannon. Blake Bortles, what a surprise, throwing it to an obscure player for his only touchdown pass. One of the most obscure players in the league, Blake Bortles is. And he did what he needed to do to win this game and give the Jaguars its probably, in my opinion, most exciting playoff victory since probably either when they retired Dan Marino or when they beat the Denver Broncos in 96. It was exciting. Steelers fans were already looking forward to the next week against New England. They thought they had this game in the bag, even though in the regular season, the Jaguars bodied this team 30-9, to and they ended up winning 45-42, which is closer than what the score shows. It should have been 45-35, but the Steelers ended up scoring a touchdown with, I believe, three seconds left on the clock, so it made things look a little bit closer than what they actually were. But Bortles did exactly what was asked of him. He went out there, he managed the game, he threw for over 200 yards and didn't make any mistakes. This was pinnacle Blake Bortles in his best moments. It wasn't a career best day, but it definitely was his best as a game manager for Jacksonville. Number four versus the Houston Texans in 2017. 72 completion percentage, 326 yards, three touchdowns. No interceptions. In this game, I talked about how significant it was a couple of times. This was the first time the Jaguars clinched the playoffs in 10 years since 2007, and they were going to be making a playoff berth. And they faced the Houston Texans, who just were not ready for the Jaguars, and they didn't have Deshaun Watson. I don't even think they had Tom Savage at the time. I'm not sure who their quarterback was, but the Jaguars were all over it, and Blake Bortles was on. Again, completing 72% of his passes, throwing for over 300 yards and three touchdowns, all of which, if I'm not mistaken, were to Jadon Mickens, a guy who is not on the team anymore. But Jadon Mickens was a crucial part of this 2017 Jaguars team from special teams, and he also proved when there's injuries at the wide receiver position, he could be called on to make some plays, and he did just that, scoring three touchdowns for Blake Bortles being a reliable target again for Bortles. But Blake performed on the biggest stage where he knew that he needed to get his team into the playoffs, and it was an absolute terrific performance and one that Jags fans will never, ever forget. Number three versus the Baltimore Ravens in London, 244 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. This defense played lights out in London and made sure Joe Flacco had a career worst day. He only threw 29 yards against this 2017 Jacksonville Jaguar defense and Blake Bortles held his end of the bargain up on the offensive end, throwing 244 yards and four touchdowns, three of which were to veteran tight end Mercedes Lewis. Maurice Jones Drew called that in the halftime show and he ended up balling out. Three touchdowns for Mr. Mercedes Lewis. Blake Bortles uh, relying on the old Wiley veteran in London to get him those touchdown receptions. And he played perfect. Did exactly what he needed to do. And these are the games that you really, really wish Bortles just had more of. Games where he just did exactly what he needed to do. Bortles found himself trying to do too much in a lot of different situations. Where he really, really wanted to help his team win. Which would lead to mistakes but in this game, it was straight up 44-0, to or 44-6, to and Blake Bortles was part of that successful game and that successful team in 2017, and probably the biggest blowout in London history, and that's going to stand for a long, long time. It's also the biggest loss of margin for the Baltimore Ravens in the history of their franchise, and who was the quarterback? Blake Bortles. Number two. Versus the New England Patriots in 2017, 293 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. A game in a whole playoff uh, is where Blake Bortles did exactly what he needed to do. He didn't turn the ball over once in the postseason. This defense and some poor officiating bended at the last second to pick New England all the way back up to give them the lead, the GOAT Tom Brady leading the charge. Bortles was 
threw a good ball to D.D. Westbrook, but one athletic play by Stephon Gilmore defined Blake Bortles' legacy. Could you imagine how different things would have been if Blake Bortles ended up going to the Super Bowl? That would be so wild because think about it. Blake Bortles would end up going up against Nick Foles, like our quarterback now against our quarterback of the past in the Super Bowl. Wouldn't that be crazy? I don't know a situation... If we, I don't know if we end up getting Nick Foles, and I don't think Blake Bortles gets such a modest contract extension if the Jaguars beat the Patriots. So, in the front office, might be thanking him in that sense because they didn't have to fork up, you know, top seven, top five quarterback money for Blake freaking Bortles. And could you imagine the situation we'd be in if Bortles, uh, you know, if he lost that Super Bowl, we gave him all that money, and then he had the same 2018 season? Could you imagine the place we'd be in? But I think if he ended up winning the Super Bowl in 2018, still kind of went the way it did, I don't think Jags fans would be that upset because they have a Super Bowl ring and Blake Bortles was the guy to bring it to him. Uh, and, you know, it's just, it's crazy. Blake Bortles, you know, could have had a Super Bowl ring and he could have faced our current quarterback in the Super Bowl and that would have been completely, completely insane to see how things would have worked out if the Jags were able to go to the Super Bowl in 2017. And number one in the best Blake Bortles game of all time versus the New England Patriots, 2018, 376 yards, four touchdowns, one interception, and a victory against the New England Patriots. This was our Super Bowl of 2018. In week two, we had a revenge game against the Patriots. Miles Jack was not down. Heated, heated emotions. This team wanted a victory. And what did they do? They outworked and outcoached the New England Patriots and dominated them. This was a stretch last year. And, you know, they ended up winning the Super Bowl. So we beat the Super Bowl champions. So technically, we should actually be Super Bowl champions in 2018. And so should the Detroit Lions. So the Jags and the Lions really should have played in the Super Bowl because we beat the Patriots. NFL, look into that. What the hell happened? Why did the Patriots and the Rams play? Could you imagine how much better of a Super Bowl it would have been if the Jags and the Lions played each other head-to-head? 5-11, and 11, don't really know what the Lions were, but they weren't great either. Super Bowl, because we beat the Patriots, they won the Super Bowl, so fuck that, you know? The regular season don't even matter to you guys, does it? Okay, that was a stupid rant, but you know, Blake Bortles, man, this 2018 game... I think everybody was kind of thinking he deserved the money we gave him. And he threw for 200, I mean, 376 yards, four touchdowns, one pick. This guy was on all game long. He was making every throw he needed to. Keelan Cole with that amazing, amazing catch. D.D. Westbrook going 76 yards to the house. This was one of the best Jaguar games in recent memory, at least in the regular season, from how it felt to finally, finally beat the Patriots and to beat Tom Brady in 2018. But after that, it was a downhill slope, but let's not even think about that. Let's appreciate Blake Bortles in this video, and let's send the boat off with our congratulations and our thank yous for what he gave us in 2017 and for what he gave us of just being a great, great overall guy. I know you guys are going to hate this video, but I don't care. I love Blake Bortles, and I'll take any chance I can get to shout my man's out. And that was the top 10 best Blake Bortles performances of all time. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Dems are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.